Getting some real nostalgia for early 2000s styles cameras today. I wonder why? Because we got the new Canon PowerShot V10. But is the newest edition any good? Hey, I'm Rob, and welcome back to Furby. The all-in-one pocket camera style seems to be making a comeback recently, uh, probably due to all the youths and their Tic Tacs and Instagrams. First glance on the product, you can see it is very simple, but that does make it very easy to use. With just a few buttons on the back and a big record button on the front, you almost can't go wrong using this thing. The uh, touch LCD display that takes up half of the device flips up to reveal itself at the front in what I would call probably the perfect angle. It's just above the lens, so when you're staring right into it, your eye lines seem to match pretty well. Continuing with the flip out design, it also has this built in flip out stand on the base, allowing you to uh, stand it up on any table or flat surface to uh, film yourself when you're on the go. It feels quite nice and sturdy. It is all plastic, but it has this metal reinforcement bar on the bottom, so you're not going to break it too easily. Continuing around the device, we have a USB C charging on the left, and on the other side, we have a microphone input as well as micro HDMI port, which usually in a camera I would say is a, a pretty big downside as the micro HDMI cable spec is always uh, so notorious for breaking very easily. But in a small camera like this, you wouldn't really have much other options, but at least it isn't mini HDMI. Continuing on to the top, you can see it has these two quite large stereo microphones built right in. And on the bottom, we have the micro SD card slot, as well as a standard tripod mount. The entire build is, I would say, 95% plastic. It does feel a little bit like a toy. However, it does feel surprisingly dense for such a small little thing. So it, it does have a little bit of substantiality to it. But yeah, it's not the uh, most expensive feeling product in the world. The lens itself is a fixed 19 millimeter ultra wide equivalent, which seems to be sort of the, uh, the perfect uh, pick for this camera as at arm's length, there is uh, no cropping off foreheads here. Underneath the lens is their one inch sensor, which seems to be a borrowed from their 2019 PowerShot model. Um, however, there are a few improvements under the hood to give it a little bit more performance. For resolutions and frame rates, uh, it can shoot 4K up to 30 FPS and 1080p at 2530 or 5060. I found the autofocus to be surprisingly good on this thing. It has full face tracking as well as object tracking with a few touches on the touchscreen, which seems to work pretty well. Other than that, you get a 1.5, 2, and 3x digital zoom, which looks how you would expect. Probably not worth doing. You might as well just do it in post. And a bunch of filter color options, which are obviously to give you that Instagram look, uh, but no additional uh, flat color modes or log modes to be seen. However, it does use Canon's color science, so it should match your other Canon cameras quite well. Uh, but you're not going to go super far color grading this footage. Not that the uh, audience for this camera is looking for that anyway, but it's still worth mentioning. In the video realm, it has four shooting modes. It has auto movie, which uh, sets your exposures and shutters and all that all automatically. It has auto smooth skin, which gives you that beauty, horrible baby face look that you would recognize from all those Instagram filters. It has an IS image stabilization mode. It has two strengths to this, standard and enhanced. Standard seems to be pretty okay for most situations. Enhanced is a little strong for me, and both of them do crop the final image, the enhanced, quite extremely. So I would maybe use the standard here and there, but the enhanced I'd probably stay away from. And finally, it does at least have a manual exposure mode. So you can set your aperture, shutter, and ISO all manually, albeit with only a small range to work with in each. The shutter can go from 1 8 all the way up to 1 4 thousandths, which is pretty decent range. For aperture, you only get the range between 2.8 and 8, and ISO goes from 200 to 3200. Interestingly though, it does have a built-in ND filter, 
just one value, but it does have it. So when you go outside in the sun, it should auto turn on if you've set it to auto or you can set it manually. So right now I'm recording on the PowerShot V10. We're in 4K25. Uh, obviously I've got quite good studio lighting here, but the auto exposure seems to be pretty good. Uh, we're using the built-in uh, stereo microphones. Uh, we're in quite a big echoey room here at the studio. Um, so you, I'm expecting you to hear quite a bit of the echo, um, the background noise. Uh, I've turned the wind reduction off. So you might get a bit of that. But I'm not even at full arm's length and it's pretty good framing. The face autofocus seems to be doing pretty good as well. Okay, now I've turned on the image stabilization. So if I'm walking around a bit, this is sort of the stabilized look you'll get. Up and down, running around a bit. It's a very minor crop in the standard stabilization. It seems to do pretty well at getting rid of those big judders and shakes without giving you too much of a warpy, blurry mess. But then if I switch it over to enhanced, see the crop is quite a bit more substantial and much stronger in the stabilization. I am noticing my head going in and out of frame here where it's sort of reframing me quite, quite intensely. But um, it seems to be doing the job. But if I hold it at full arm's length, I'm still quite in frame. Maybe even better if I'm in portrait, then I'm less likely to have my top of my head cut off. Now with the video modes, you only get a 20 minute runtime, which is probably the biggest downside to this camera. But I can see it making kind of sense if it's mostly being used for social media, as you're not gonna be uploading more than 20 minutes to Snapchat. The other audience I could see um, liking this quite a bit are sort of people wanting to have a nice all-in-one sort of holiday camera or something they can take to an event. But that 20 minute runtime means you're gonna be start and stopping this quite constantly. You wanna capture every moment from the wedding ceremony, you're definitely gonna wanna really be on the ball with the record button. However, one cool feature that sort of mitigates that a little bit is it does have built-in live streaming. So you just connect it to the Canon app and you can live stream directly from the camera itself. And uh, if you plug it into a computer, it can act as a webcam to use streaming there. And if you connect it over USB-C to a computer, you can use it as a webcam and stream like that as well. This is definitely way better than most webcams on the market. So I'd say it's definitely worth it in that regard. The nice big stereo mics on the top do sound pretty good. However, as they are so big and pointing directly up, you're gonna be picking up quite a lot of background. There are some wind mitigation settings inside the camera, which help a little bit. Or you can get the optional accessory sticky dead cats. They are magnetic, but the little uh, magnet that goes onto the microphones themselves is an adhesive. Once you put them on, they aren't gonna come off too easily. Uh, and once, if you rip them off and the adhesive gets all funky, you're not gonna be able to put them back on. However, if you don't wanna deal with wind muffs, all the built-in wind mitigation settings, uh, it does have a microphone jack on the side. So you could plug in a small camera microphone or a lavalier even. Something a bit more substantial that can help mitigate that wind noise quite a bit. However, as you can see, if you've got a little microphone and plugged it into the side, there's nowhere really for it to go. But Canon, or should I say small rig, thought of this. This marks the first time a collaboration like this has ever happened with, between Canon and an accessory brand. Hopefully this uh, means more to come for their bigger, more substantial cameras. But anyway, this is the small rig cage for the PowerShot. It's quite simple. You flip up the top, you slip the camera in, and then you can latch on the top. I do find this latch is a little bit finicky, but once it's clicked in, it seems to be solid and it gives you an additional three screw mounts as well as keeping the tripod mount on the bottom. This will then, with a small cold shoot adapter, allow you to put any type of accessory you can imagine, be it a small camera microphone or a lavalier pack, maybe. So I slide this microphone onto the front here 
screw it down and plug it in. We have then improved the audio quite a bit. Okay, right, now we're at 1080p 50 frames a second on the PowerShop V10. I've plugged in my little Sennheiser microphone to the side onto the cold stream mount. So this is sort of what you'd get with a, a separate sort of mic setup. But I've now connected the my lavalier directly to the input onto the camera and this is how it would sound with a lavalier setup. Uh, it seems to be working pretty good. The small rig stand does increase versatility quite a bit with the power shot. They even allowed a little cutout to still use the fold-out stand. The Canon PowerShot V10 retails for £429 at time of recording. This is about £100 less than the Sony ZV-1F, which seems to be the about equivalent of this camera from Sony's range. Uh, however, that is a bit more of a traditional camera body style. This is definitely very unique, very uh, a very strange form factor that might um, appeal to some. £429 isn't too bad, but where our phones are so good nowadays, really the audience must be quite small for this kind of device. I could see it working, obviously, for those social media influencer types that don't want to get a phone upgrade or need a second camera to work with. Holiday goers that want to capture their holiday moments in a device separate from their phone that you don't have to worry about keeping charged as much as their phone. You could take it to a gig if you're worried about smashing up your phone. But overall, I think the, uh, the sensor, being that same one from the 2019 model, is a bit of a uh, downside. Uh, maybe if they increased the frame rates a bit more higher, if we had at least a 4K60, that would have been really nice. As well as a broader range of tweakable settings in the manual mode. I think that would have definitely made this quite a more interesting sell. The image quality is great, however, it is better than most phone cameras, but like if you've got one of those flagships, top end iPhone, top end Samsung, you're probably still gonna look a bit better than this. So it's definitely not a camera for those kind of people. However, if you've got a lower end, cheaper phone, this definitely could improve your image quality quite a bit, especially with that built in audio. I'm interested to see what this small rig Canon collaboration brings to us more in the future. Uh, as I said, this is uh, the first whack at this, but I'd be interested to see uh, more products from them in the other realms. But I guess that just about does it. This has been the Canon PowerShot V10. I've been Rob, this has been Photobyte. If you've liked this video, check out our other videos, maybe on a sort of similar kind of vibe. Uh, we checked out the DJI Pocket cameras, which are like little miniature gimbals. Uh, in the palm of your hand, which is sort of like a, a vlogging style. You can check that out up here. But yeah, I've been Rob, this has been Photobike, and I'll catch you later. Bye-bye.